Hey guys, it's Natalia and welcome back to another Fashion Design 101 episode. Today we're going to be patterning a pant. This is probably the most complex out of all of them. So we've already done a torso, we've done a skirt, now we're moving on to pants. So if you missed the other two videos, feel free to check those out. I will have them linked down below. But yeah, today we're making pants, so I'm super excited. Also a reminder that I am making little guides for you guys to kind of follow along on my website. I've made them for every video, so this is like the skirt one, this is the bodice one, and they're just meant to give you like a visual guide, a visual aid, because I know sometimes just following along with the video isn't super helpful and sometimes you just kind of need to see it just like laid out in a diagram form so I made those for you guys you can check them out on my website I will also have them linked down below for you and I have one for this video as well and without further ado let's get into it top part first just because that's the most complex part obviously and just so you guys can see it kind of up close so that's what we're going to go ahead and start with so I'm gonna go ahead and make a line for my waist up here at the top of my paper with a bit of space at the top just extend that over next I'm gonna take my waist to hip measurement which for me is nine and I'm going to go ahead and mark that and I'm gonna extend that line over Next, I'm going to take my crotch measurement, which is the rise, plus an inch for ease and movement. And I'm going to go ahead and measure that from the waist all the way down and mark it. So that for me would be 11 inches plus one. So I'm going to go ahead and mark 12 inches. And I'm going to go ahead and extend that over. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the crotch measurement here because this is obviously going to be the longest measurement that's gonna actually hit the paper. The rest is gonna kinda of go inward. So I just wanna start off with that because that's where our paper currently lies. So, so there's a lot of different ways to get this specific measurement that we're about to use. I've seen a lot of different people do it a lot of different ways using rulers, measurements and whatnot. But this is a measurement that's a little bit hard to measure on yourself. And especially if you don't have the right ruler for it, which you need an L-shaped ruler, which I don't think every person has so I found a different method that I think should work but again you should always make a mock-up of this and try it on and adjust if need be but this is the method that we're gonna be using today so for the front you're gonna take a fourth of your hip measurement so for me it's 35 divided by 4 which is 8 and 3 fourths and then take 15% of that so you can multiply that by 0.15 to get your crotch measurement so for me that roughly equals out to 2 and an eighth so I'm gonna go ahead and mark that then I'm gonna go ahead and bring that point all the way up to the waist, and that is where our waist is going to start. So now that we have this point up here, we can go ahead and measure out where our waist is gonna end and where our hip is gonna end accordingly. So for the waist, you're gonna take your waist measurement divided by four plus a fourth plus an inch for a dart to get your full waist measurement. So for me, that would be 24 divided by four, which is six plus a fourth is six and a fourth plus an inch gives me seven and a fourth. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that from the point that we just drew. Then I'm gonna go ahead and find my hip point. So that is your hip measurement divided by four plus three eighths. So that for me would be 35 divided by four, which is eight and three fourths plus three eighths gives me nine and an eighth. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that hip measurement up so next to figure out where my dart is gonna be, I'm going to find the midway point of the crotch, so this whole line right here, and then bring that up, and that's gonna be where my dart's gonna be. And we're gonna bring that line all the way down because that's gonna be kind of our balance line. It's also considered a crease line. If you have trousers that kind of have that line up in the front, that's where it would be. So I'm gonna take half of that. So this measurement is roughly 11 and a fourth, so that gives me a little bit over five and a half. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure that right here. And then I'm going to bring that up and then go ahead and extend it down a bit too. So now we're gonna go ahead and make our dart. So we're going to measure half an inch on either side of that line. 
And we're gonna make this dart about three and a half inches long, so we're just gonna go ahead and mark that there, and then bring your other points down to it. Before we start connecting the waist to the hip, we're actually gonna connect it at a higher point up here. So we're gonna measure two inches up from the hip point right there. And this is where our waist is gonna meet our hip up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my hip curve and find a point where that meets. And I'm gonna go ahead and mark that. Next to figure out our crotch curve, I've heard there's like a billion different ways to do this. Everybody does different measurements and different things with it. And honestly, I don't know which one is the most correct way, but I just go ahead and place my curve there and find a point that meets the crotch and meets the hip up here. And then I mark that. And then as always, if you find that this needs to be longer, shorter, whatever needs to be fixed, you can do that before transferring this to an actual cardboard type paper. I think it's always really important to make a draft of this in muslin or some sort of like really cheap fabric just to make sure the fit is right. So again, you can kind of figure that out later, but I just don't want y'all coming for me in the comments of different ways to do this because I know there's a billion different ways to do this. So the last thing we're gonna do is bring the waist up here down a fourth of an inch because if you've ever folded pants, you know that this point is actually lower and then the back point is a little bit higher because when you sit down, like you need more space in the back than the front. So that's why we do that. So then you're gonna take that point and bring it up to the waist point on the other side. So now we've got something that looks like this and we're gonna figure out our dart thing later, but now we're gonna move on to the back side. Okay, so now we've moved on to the back and we're honestly gonna do a lot of the same things that we did on the front. So we're gonna go ahead and figure out our hip point. So you're gonna take your hip measurement divided by four plus three eighths to figure out where your hip is gonna be. So for me, that's 35 divided by four, which is eight and three fourths plus three eighths would give me nine and an eighth. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure that from this point outwards. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring that point up. So next we can go ahead and figure out our crotch point. For the back, it's obviously going to be a steeper curve than the front because um, we all have butts, so that is that. So for this one, you're gonna take your hip measurement, divide it by four, and then take 45% of that. So for me, that would be, so for me, that would be 35 divided by four, which is eight and three fourths, and then I'm gonna multiply that by 0.45. So that would give me roughly three and seven eighths. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that from this point outward. Next, we're gonna go ahead and figure out our waist. So we're gonna take our waist measurement divided by four, plus a fourth for ease, plus an inch for the dart. So for me, that would be 24 divided by four, which is six, plus a fourth is six and a fourth, plus an inch for the dart gives me seven and a fourth. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that from the hip point outward. Next, like we did in the front, I'm gonna find the midway point of the crotch and bring that up for it to be my dart. So this measurement for me turns out to be 13. So I'm gonna take six and a half and mark that up. Then I'm gonna go ahead and mark half an inch on either side of that line up here for my dart. And then I'm gonna bring this dart down four and a half inches. This one's always lower than the front one. So I'm gonna mark that and then bring these points down to it. I'm gonna move this down so you guys can see a little bit better. Next, I'm gonna connect my waist to my hip, the same that we did at the front. So two inches above the hip is where it's actually going to meet. So I'm gonna take my hip curve and go ahead and mark that. Then for the back, you wanna take your waist measurement up here and bring it up a fourth because obviously when you sit down, you need enough room for your pants to not like go all the way down. We all know what that's like. So definitely go ahead and bring that up. It just helps for movement. And now we're gonna go ahead and make the curve of our crotch. So this one's obviously going to be a lot steeper than the front one. So I'm gonna kinda of just figure out a point where it meets well and then bring that up. And then obviously you kind of want to uh, smooth that out a little bit. So we're nearly done with the top of the draft. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to the bottom and then we're gonna come back to do the darts a little bit later, but let's move on to the bottom of the pant. So first things first, I'm gonna bring all of my lines. So I'm gonna bring this middle line down that is between the front and back. Then I'm gonna bring my dart lines down as well on both the front and back. Next, we're gonna mark where our pant is gonna end so that our inseam measurement, if you're shorter, it's gonna be quite short. If you're taller, it's gonna be a little longer. For me, it's about 28 inches. I am definitely on the shorter side of things. I'm gonna go ahead and measure 28 inches from the crotch line down. 18, 28. So I'm gonna measure that, and I'm gonna go ahead and make that a horizontal line all the way through so that I know where it ends on both sides. 
So next to find where our knee is gonna be, you're gonna take the halfway point between the crotch and the end of your pant, and that is where your knee goes. So for me, the halfway point would be at 14 inches because my inseam is 28. So I'm gonna go ahead and find the 14 inch mark. I'm gonna go ahead and mark that. And then I'm gonna bring that over horizontally. So to finish up the pant and kind of figure out where you want it to end and all of that, it's kind of stylized at this point of how tight you want it to be or how loose you want it to be. So I'm gonna do like a general in between, like not skin tight, but not super loose kind of point. So we're gonna go ahead and take our knee circumference, which for me was 13 and a half. Divide that by two, which gives me six and three fourths. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add an inch to that just to give myself like wiggle room so it's not like super skin tight. So that for me is gonna be seven and three fourths. Then I'm gonna take the seven and three fourths divided by two, which gives me three and seven eighths. And I'm gonna mark that on either side of my dark point here. And I'm also gonna do that on the front. So now you can take your hip curve and kind of start to put together those points. So this is going to obviously be a curve. So it's gonna look something like that. Then you're also gonna go ahead and bring the hip point down to the knee. And it's also going to be a slight curve. So it's gonna look something like that. Then we're gonna do the same thing to the front. So next we're gonna take this line all the way down just straight, and we're gonna do the same on the front. So from that point out, you can kind of measure your ankle circumference and figure out how wide you want it to be there. So I'm gonna take my ankle circumference, which is 13 and a half, divided by two gives me six and three fourths, and then I'm gonna add an inch to that, which gives me seven and three fourths. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that. I'm gonna do the same on the front. And then you can go ahead and bring that line up to our knee point. And you're gonna wanna kind of smooth this out a bit and not make it a super sharp corner. So I'm gonna take just a little curve right there, curve that out. I'm gonna go ahead and curve that out. That's kind of the finished draft of the pant. Honestly, you're gonna find that you're probably not gonna make this exact patterned pant and you're probably going to stylize it, whether that be making them wider or slimmer or shorter or longer, or whatever. You're probably not gonna take this like exact measurement of it, but you do wanna make sure that this measurement does fit for you to then be able to make other patterns out of it. So always be sure to put this on fabric first and then make your actual pattern off of it. Just gonna say that a billion times because pants are tricky and it's always good to double check. So now let's finalize the top dart and then we will be done. So to finalize the dart, you're gonna go ahead and fold the dart in like so. Then you're gonna take your tracing wheel and go over the waist point. And you're gonna find that that leaves a little triangle up here. So you're gonna go ahead and mark that with your pencil. And that's gonna be your new waistline with the little dart triangle on top. We're gonna do the same thing to the front. So we're gonna take this and fold it. And we're gonna take our tracing wheel and trace over our waistline. Then we're gonna go ahead and mark that little triangle that it creates and that makes our new waistline. So now I'm gonna take this and transfer it onto my oak tag, which is a thicker cardboard-like material just so that I can have a better pattern of it. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, give it a thumbs up and comment down below what you want to see next because there's a lot more coming from this series and I'm super excited to make it all. Also, just a slight disclaimer that whenever we are making these patterns, you should always make it in some sort of cheap fabric to make sure it fits before transferring it onto like a legit paper because you never know if your measurements were slightly off or whatever. So it's always good to double check in that way. I just, I feel like I haven't said that in every video, but just as a rule of thumb, you should probably do that. But yeah, that's it for today's video. So subscribe if you're not already subscribed so you get notified every time I upload a new video. And feel free to follow my social medias. My Instagram is at Natalia Trevino Morrow for my shop and at Natalia.Trevino for my personal. Feel free to follow both. And that is it. So I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.